Hi, just a quick video, uh, responding to a uh, Twitter comment, in fact a couple of people uh, commented on this uh, with exactly the same thing, I'm always posting updates on uh, Twitter X uh, about, you know, my solar, all sorts of things, <laughs> but uh, I posted something about my new uh, solar uh, power installation here, and um, how, like, uh, oh, here it is, I really need to change that hot water timer back a few hours, even in winter my solar starts at 7am and the hot water heat pump only takes one kilowatt of power and that's that little that's that little blue uh, line you can see there that's my new heat pump hot water system I've done videos on that I changed from gas hot water to heat pump hot water and uh, I'll explain why anyway uh, thank you very much Monchi uh, Abad if I'm pronouncing that correctly and also um, someone else who asked the same question and this isn't the first time I've been asked this I've been asked this a lot so I thought I'd do a video explaining this hey his question is what about installing a solar thermal collector or maybe making a water cooling solution for your solar panels and using a heat exchanger to both raise the efficiency of your photovoltaic panels and preheat your water supply and well it's a quite a good question and there are actually companies that I I even think uh, Linus from Linus Tech Tips actually reviewed and installed some water cooled uh, solar panels there's a company that actually supplies them with all the piping built into the back of the panel so that you can hook them all up and then you can uh, feed your pool water through or something like that and you can you know heat up your uh, pool at the same time as like uh, cooling down uh, your panels because the solar panel efficiency increases uh, based on, well it decreases as the temperature increases so if you can decrease the temperature of your solar panels you increase it rough rule of thumb it's about 0.5 uh, percent efficiency on uh, silicon solar panels uh, per degree celsius roughly um so this is a good question in fact there's a two-part question uh the first one is solar thermal collector here um I've actually designed and built and installed my own solar uh, thermal thing that I installed. It was called the Solar Sponge, and here it is here. Uh, this is back in the early 2000s, and I actually uh, wrote an article in Renew Magazine. I'm not sure if that's still going, but in an old episode, old um, uh, article in Renew Magazine, I published uh, this, and it was on my uh, website, but uh, uh, the website's currently uh, down at the moment, and designed and built my own solar air heater here. So I do know um, a, a thing or two about us. Uh, solar air heaters and I've got efficiency graphs in there somewhere they're linked in um, but anyway uh, yes I have actually designed and built my own it actually collects solar thermal energy and then you pump uh, air through it uh, you know using inline uh, fans and you can heat your house up and they're not that great <laughs> they're they're really yeah they're not hugely efficient they're not not a terrific thing you're better off having aircon these days with your very efficient aircon uh, systems which are heat pumps of course they have a coefficient of performance greater than one and which is another reason why i installed my uh went switch from gas hot water to heat pump hot water system and I've done a video on that and I've actually done not only ever done videos of analyzing all this but I've also done a video which I'll link in uh, in how little energy the heat pump hot water system uses so uh, yeah going back here so in terms of like uh, using a solar air heater to actually heat up your house no I do not recommend them that's they've gone out of favor they were like a thing like 20 odd years ago uh something like that 20 30 years ago they were a thing but now uh, like well, aircons were efficient back then and they're you know a little bit more efficient now but they're just as efficient basically yeah there's you know you've got to dedicate your roof space you remember you have a limited amount of roof space a limited square area are you better off dedicating that roof space to a solar thermal collector like this or are you better off dedicating them to solar panels there's absolutely no question here no doubt about it you're better off uh, putting solar panels in your rooftop because then you can use the energy for everything in my case I use it for uh, powering all my house energy uh, during the day I use it for charging my EV because I basically drive a solar powered EV it uses the excess uh, solar that I would otherwise go back to the grid to charge uh, my EV so pretty much 100% uh, solar powered uh, car I've got and uh, now it heats my hot water as well and it also cools and heats my house in summer and winter uh, based on because I'm I'm here in Sydney Australia you know it's like we don't have like the same sort of heating requirements in fact we don't heat our house much during it's the middle of winter here at the moment we still don't 
heat the house all that much. It's, you know, only on like a really, the odd cold day that we might actually, you know, turn the uh, air cons on to actually heat up. It's more for like in summer when you want to uh, cool things down, but you know, it's different in different parts of the world. But anyway, here, Let's have a look at it, okay? So I, I did a video analyzing how little power my heat pump uh, hot water system actually uses. It's a tiny amount. And I believe that one was uh, doing during summer because have a look at that uh, that blue graph there compared to the yellow uh, production graph. And let's go over to today. And today, well, 15th of July here, we had a absolutely perfect solar day in the middle of winter here, right? We're still smack in the middle of winter. I was producing 5.21 kilowatts at uh, peak. That's from both of my uh, dual um, solar systems because they've got two different uh, systems, but this is actually the combined uh, total. And the blue one there is my hot water because I've got a current clamp on my hot water system so I know how much it actually draws. Now, um, I took a big, long, hot bath last night, so it actually took longer than normal to heat up. So if we go back a day, it used less, and a day before that, that's probably a typical day there, right? So it draws one kilowatt of power, and it's only on for like two and a half to three hours. Of course, this is winter, so it takes longer. In summer, it's only on for like an hour and a half, two hours. So it draws like two and a half, maybe three kilowatt hours total during the day how much energy does my solar produce well here you can see up oh, here we go here you can see that uh, uh today it produced 30 kilowatt hours 30 kilowatt hours of energy produced from my solar panels and my hot water system here uh, well you can see it it's it's in the blue down there right it's like five kilowatt hours, right? It's like four and a half, five kilowatt hours, something like that, right? Well, uh, sorry, you have to go over to the perfect day over here. Yeah, right, it's, it's that blue one there compared to how much I actually produce. So in, even in winter, you can see it's basically the energy is the area under the curve, okay? So basically fill in the area under that blue curve there even though I took a big long hot bath last night and used lots of hot water, I was treating myself, um, and then compare that to the energy under the yellow curve, which is the energy produced by all of my solar panels. It's like even in winter, it's like, what, one six, something like that, of the energy. In summer, it's less than a tenth of my energy, like not even an order of magnitude. It's crazy the little amount of power that you can get with a very efficient heat pump hot water system because they have a coefficient of performance greater than one um, and of course it, it's kind of seasonal as i said but in summer it's it's less than a tenth <laughs> of my total energy produced by the day uh, during the day so am i better having on my roof like dedicating my roof to uh, you know, some sort of like solar collector or something, you know, the old fashioned solar heart hot water systems that were all the rage in the 1980s, right? Every rooftop in Australia had a solar heart hot water system. Uh, not many people use them these days. I know they still, uh, they still have their uses in uh, certain areas and, you know, stuff like that, but they're not that common uh, these days. So yeah, it's, it's much better to use a heat pump hot water uh, system. Yeah, the installation cost is a little bit more and I got a premium system and everything, but geez, like, <laughs> no, I'm better off dedicating my roof space for solar panels that I can use for everything, not just heating water. Now, how about uh, the question about uh, using, cooling down the efficiency of the uh, photovoltaic uh, panels? Okay, well, that sounds like a good idea, but as I said, about 0.5% per degree C, okay, improvement. So if you can put, so if you can run all these pipes under your solar panels, right? So either you've got to do that yourself somehow and thermally couple them, or you've got to buy special solar panels that already have the piping installed, and then you've got all this piping over your roof. But anyway, let's assume that, they, that you do that and you can cool down your panels by say 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, great. You can preheat your water. Okay, I can preheat my water going into my hot water system and maybe I can use like one third the energy <laughs> or something. I don't know, you know, leave it in the comments down below if you've got a better estimate. But uh, let's say, you know, I could use very, you know, a third the energy. It's still nothing compared to what I produce for like, you just 
trying to, you're installing this hideously complex system where you've got to pump water and you've got to use energy to pump the water up and through all these panels. And you've got to pump it through all your panels. I've got 28 solar panels on my roof. 28 solar panels, as if I'm going to run pipes snaking across each panel and then goes to the next panel and then goes to the next panel, goes to the next panel and just runs like, no, <laughs> no, it's silly. So I can gain like 5% because half a degree per half a percent per degree C, you might get 5% improvement in the efficiency of solar panels. Sorry, but that's the whoop de doo category, <laughs> category, right? So yeah, nah is the answer to that. Um, excellent question, but, but the answer is no. Um, it's, just, it's just not worth it. It's not worth the complexity. Uh, it's even though you're not increasing your roof space because you've already got the solar panels up there, it's not worth all the complexity of pumping the water under all these solar panels you've got on your roof and potential leaks and maintenance problems and energy to drive the pump. I don't know what energy you need to pump. I know that my pool takes a fair amount. Here's my pool today. Okay, here it is, pool. That, that, that's my pool on for two hours. Okay, so it's pumping, uh, that's a one kilowatt, 1.2 kilowatt, and that pumps that uh, through. Oh, my phone's ringing. I'm not gonna edit this. Um, it, it's Mrs. EV blog. Should I take it? Oh, I might have to edit this. So yeah, that, that energy there, um, that's to pump like the water, uh, 250 liters a minute. Um, so I don't know how much you'd uh, need to pump it through like all <laughs> 28 solar panels in my case, right? Um, yeah, it's just it's just not worth the complexity. So no um, is the answer. You're way better off dedicating your roof space to solar panels and then changing everything over to electric power so that you can use it. That includes heat pump, hot water system. We change from gas. So we've got no gas bill now. We don't use gas for anything uh, except the barbecue. And we just use bottled gas for that and it lasts forever. Um, and we just you know, recharge that at local servo every six months when we need to. Um, no problem whatsoever. So yeah, you're way better off dedicating your roof space uh, to that instead of any solar hot water system. So, uh, solar Heart was a brand here in Australia. I think you can still buy them. Um, you know, you can get those uh, runs pipes into a thermal collector on your roof and it uh, preheats your water. So yeah, I don't think you can get fully hot water. Well, well, you can in the middle of summer, especially here in Australia, you get full seriously hot water out of it. Um, but yeah, it's not consistent. So you've got to preheat it. So you still need, uh, you know, a a hot water system to actually uh, do that and you can lower your energy but you're better off changing over to heat pump hot water system sure okay they're a heat pump um and they've got just like an aircon they've got maintenance issues but i've had an aircon installed for 20 years having a single problem um <laughs> in 20 years so heat pumps are pretty reliable buy a good you know japanese brand one and bob's your uncle Right, so yeah, solar, excellent uh, excellent uh, question there. Solar thermal collectors or preheating um, your, uh, you know, hot water or heating up your pool or something. But no, I'm better off simply installing more solar panels and just having a regular heat pump. As I said, I've got a heat pump hot water system for the pool. I've done a video on that. So you're way better off doing that. So that is the answer uh, to that question for those uh, many who have asked. Um, and I constantly get questions. So now I've got a video to point them to. So there you go. Um, thoughts and comments down below, please. Catch you next time. Hello.